Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. Hello there, guys. So we did a, another music video over on Hearts Home. It's uh, also up on Patreon as well. <clears throat> and this one we entitled Ambient Astral Journey. 432 hertz, as we know, Rockefellers uh, switched everything to 440, which is a much more irritating uh, frequency. And, and that's basically... Uh, talking about how many uh, word C is basically vibrating at. It doesn't take much of a change in frequency to really change everything in our reality. And that's one of the things we wanted to talk about mm -hmm. with this video. Yes, and uh, Mike always has a special type of energy when he's playing his guitar and in, in that energy, I like to do a little bit of work myself, and uh, I have a couple of crystals that are, are very, very special. They were given to me by very special people that I use to pattern, pattern inside of that with. So there's also grounding, grounding type of tuning in there. So hopefully this will get you grounded and make you just feel calmer and more relaxed. Put it on a loop and just try to enjoy yourself. Okay, so after that, here we go. We have Ukraine using U.S. Uh, Attackums is the uh, little acronym missiles to target Crimean Beach, killing several citizens, including children. This is a major uh, escalation. Uh, this is exactly what was said could bring about direct response from Russia and its allies to whatever nation was doing this, whatever nation uh, gave them the weapons. So in this case, it would be the United States. Uh, Russian Minister of Defense flight missions for American ATA CMS missiles are programmed by American specialists using U.S. satellite intel data. Therefore, the responsibility for the deliberate missile strike against civilians lies primarily with Washington. Such actions will not go unanswered. That almost sounds like a declaration of war, does it not? Sounds not very good. <clears throat> no. And this is exactly what the system is doing at a time when the system is being so rudely exposed for everything it always does. Uh, which, again, we wanted to touch on why are things the way they are? Well, yeah, why would somebody come... And incarnate into the chaos of this age, right? Um, again, multiple sources are talking about this event. And just to give a little more detail and clarity, Russia says this was a deliberate terrorist missile attack carried out on the city of Sevastopol by five American missiles equipped with cluster warheads. There's been an obvious desire to start WW3 and as much as our individual consciousnesses would love to shift it it takes a major paradigm shift and awakening by the masses so again do I think that any one person um, you know saying this is not really happening is going to really change anything in their reality um, maybe they'll be able to ignore it per se, but did they really come here to ignore it, in a sense? Did they come here to become part of it? Mm, well, you know, again, it all depends on what our purposes are in life, and, and understanding, I think, first, what this is. What is this crazy, crazy world? You could look at the headlines, too late to stop WW3 off a of Drudge Report. Everything is pretty much it could be categorized um as negative where where do you find the good good feeling news it's it's all just you know danger um you know doom armageddon you know everything that's bird flu uh, you, you name it all the different traumas of the egos and yeah it's just like such a negative energy overload that many people are unplugging, absolutely unplugging at this point in time. And then you have the, the revelations 
ongoing about exactly how bad the system does cultivate the darkness because the system does absolutely cultivate the darkness and when you start to awaken and you look closer you recognize that darkness is right in front of our face all the time we've talked about madonna with all her obvious rituals there's another um, post where it was actually showing an Anton LaVey who um, was kind of an actor in a lot of ways. Uh, Church of Satan, kid you not, talking about putting curses on people. And then what you see is that these curses are being put on us all the time. All the time. Why in the world would we choose to actually come here? So I think most people think, uh, well, I didn't choose to come into this world. You know, I'm only here because my parents, you know, fell in love, hopefully, or, you know, even a worse uh, case scenario, um, you know, just had a interlude one night and there they are and there you are. But no, the reality is we do choose here to choose to come here. Now, many might argue uh, until the sun rises and sets many times that there's no way they did but from our understanding and also the understanding of many that have gone very very deep and even those that have gone so deep that they've actually died and come back and share that this world is simply a temporary experience that we come here uh, to to learn to grow and to master certain aspects of ourselves mm -hmm. yeah Take, take it off that. I don't want to feed it too much. Um, it, it is definitely something that's not positive for us, you know, as far as the fear is concerned and uh, our incarnation here. <clears throat> um, but I, I've known for a very, very, very long time that humans are very special in the sense that our emotion is what sets us apart from everyone and everything it our emotion is not normal it's very abby normal and i i've i've known this i don't know how long just a long time and it was reminded me again today so i thought i would talk about it because i think a lot of people would just equate that okay you know aliens must have emotion too but aliens from other places are driven by different things when they're in another body, they might not put off those um, smells or references or frequencies. And there, there's a couple of things going on here. There's duality. We have duality and we need duality. Um, the, the dark and the light. And they both kind of pulse. There's a pulsing to them. But if you know exactly how this world works and our emotions, you would know that you could take advantage of a certain pulse and you could move things in your direction and benefit from that. So the controllers of this planet, they understand our emotions and they also see them and utilize them as an energy source. Um, and at another level, it's a food bank. At another level, it's just a wild feeding frenzy when they're able to make us afraid and traumatize us. So it's like we put off these major vibrations and it's like if you were in the water, you could probably see it and other fish and like, you know, sharks could smell it. So I try to visualize that and understand when our when we are putting off the frequency of fear and trauma we are sending this out to the universe and certain entities that that know that it's like they they answer to it they know to answer to it so this is a much higher level than we're accustomed to than we're taught things go up much higher but in reality we have come here with these emotions to learn to master these emotions um it's just another layer of an energy knows how to use it to their advantage and they're going to so what is our job here what, what is our job I, i'm here i'm in this human body i have these emotions i have to deal with them now i'm not going to say i don't really want to say people are traumatized or they're broken that's my words i don't want to say that people are broken because they're reacting to something exactly the way they should for what 
has come at them. So if something happens to you, you get in a car accident, you're in a bad relationship, somebody is bullying you, you're going to react in a way that's going to try to protect you, but it also lets out fear. So the controllers understand this, so they definitely put a lot of the light workers because we have very, very, very powerful emotions. They are very strong and they put things out there to traumatize so that we in turn react appropriately for them. If and this is what helped, helped me balance myself and it helps me continually try to find solace and try to find peace whenever something is delivered to me and I, um, and it's a trauma I have to process it. I'm not saying ignore your traumas. Absolutely not. We need to get to the bottom of them so that we can balance ourselves and so that we can uh, respond appropriately because subconscious kind of takes one incident and then applies it to all the other incidents that are uh, even a little bit the same, if that makes sense. I hope I hope I'm not losing people. Um, so subconscious starts driving the bus and this is what the controllers know. So they're, they're continually tapping people. But it is up to us. They are our emotions. Regardless of whether it's fair or not, we have to control them. We need to control them. We need to, to heal them. So this is a place on earth where we come, and it's a school, and we come here to level up. We come here to do better. We come here to expand. We come here to learn. And even though, no, we're not consciously made aware of this, in these 3D bodies, at a higher level, we are expanding. We're expanding, and it, it, it is a blessing. But there's some stinkers out there that really love to take advantage of it and utilize it for their own purposes. So I guess I'm just asking or saying if we could recognize that and do our best not to feed those energies. If you're watching someone and they give you a lot of anxiety, they send out a lot of anxiety in your energy field. Note that it's it's not good for you because all of this is like cortisol pumping through all of your organs and can make you sick. It can really make you sick. So we do our best on this channel to deliver the news, which is very real. But at the same time, we try to help you cope with it and balance yourself out. So by the end of the video, you are looking at something you have reviewed the news, you've processed it, now you're looking at something to lighten your world. So now you're aware, but you're in a good spot. It's, it's not like if you're watching something and you're just afraid the whole time until the video ends and you remain afraid. We don't want that. We don't want that. You know, bring the news, process the news, find, find a, a, a place of contentment, and let it go and then adjust your life accordingly so i hope that makes sense to everyone thank you so much for sharing all that um so many people nowadays understand the chakras our energy centers are drawing energy into the energy body again we are not the body the body is is just a vehicle every single layer though every single layer to the field is another level of consciousness because ultimately we are consciousness we are not the body and we're not even the mind it is said that the clearest um, we can grasp while we're in the body is understanding that we are the viewer just simply we are the viewer we are that which is watching all this you know all this that is in reality a in some ways, a holographic um, experience that is created for our journey. So in a sense, yes, in, in a way, we are in a big cosmic um, reality TV show <laughs> in order to learn more about the self. And it can get pretty wild when we think about that in the self. Again, you could see where when we shed the body, our consciousness just shifts to a different level. And in fact, we can shift our consciousness to another level at any time by just changing our environment. When we're in, say, a very, very noisy situation, if you're on 42nd Street in Manhattan and you smell Italian food and you're starving, uh, you know, that's, that's all you're going to be tuned into 
is just the senses that are being bombarded by all these different energetic frequencies and and the uh, the stomach might overrule everything else now if you're out in nature and you feel comfortable and you're sitting down in a very peaceful place your consciousness might be able to expand outwards more and certainly if we were in a sensory deprivation tank where all the stimulus that's coming in is kind of dampened oh then we could really expand have you ever noticed how vivid uh, sometimes that period right when you first start to fall asleep or right when you're starting to wake up, then maybe you go, start to go back asleep, uh, how vivid it can be and, and kind of interesting. Uh, again, I would recommend everybody keep a dream journal when you're first starting out if you have a hard time remembering your dreams because everybody does dream. It's just you know part of our experience, our consciousness is always somewhere pretty much and so it's it's a matter of our attention if our attention's being pulled and focused yes into lower frequencies um, then it will be harder for us to ascend up and out of this dark age um, let me bring up the analogy here when we are um, say at, at the bottom of the ferris wheel and we're looking up you know can we really see everything that's around us so well no no but conversely when we're at the top of the ferris wheel and we're viewing things down below us we could all of a sudden see have an expanded field of vision oh wow that's going on over here oh look at this over there hey look over that way all this is happening i couldn't see any of that that was happening when i was at the bottom you know in the kali yuga as we go up into the Bronze Age, then we can see a little bit more, understand a little bit more. Silver Age more. Golden Age, wow, we get it. We understand that we're having a temporary human experience. And there's no fear involved because when we choose to end this experience, we still are. And and that's the thing that we don't understand when we're at the bottom of, of the wheel in the Kali Yuga. It's interesting, too, because self-realization is the goal of Hinduism. That's the goal. Self-realization. Realize who you are. Realize what you are. What are you? You know, again, you might say, well, you know, I'm a 35-year-old man or I'm a 45-year-old woman. Whatever the, pos the position of employment is. You know, the, the usual things we associate with ourselves in this world. But the reality is you are consciousness having a temporary physical 3D experience for the point of growing, learning, and, and expanding your consciousness. This is where we change who we are. This is where we grow. This is where we expand. This is where we move borders. We, this is where we are able to add on some new things create literally new worlds for ourselves to explore later on because again we are consciousness we're we're not even the energy bodies so when you're looking at the layers of the energy body you might think well you know i'm the totality of the, all these layers of the energy bodies uh these these are all coming from the life force again we have the four primary elements that we're all familiar with earth air fire water but there's the akash or the ether the life force the, the chi the ki that which everything in this duality based uh, paradigm is really manifested from and yet we're beyond that we're actually beyond this and it's so far beyond where we are at this point in time in these bodies to totally understand what that is but it is no thing and it said again self-realization is the goal and f realizing uh, that you're not the body and yet you are okay maybe you could grasp that then when you go and you look at Buddhism, which comes out of Hinduism, but has a lot of the same central ideas. We're in a world of Maya. It's in the world of illusion, which again is in Sanskrit, you know, too, and in 
the uh, Hindu tradition. It's also in the Gnostic tradition. It's also in the Kabbalah. It's also in Hermeticism. All the mystery t- traditions teach the same thing because you know it has a common root. This root is from ages other than the Kali Yuga. So, you know, again, we get too divided when we're in this reality um, with either taking on one label or another. What we've gotten from the guides is is this way of looking at things that, that comes out of the Hindu tradition um, is perhaps the most accurate that we have. But, you know, it's it's not perfect and nothing is perfect and nothing is exactly accurate because it couldn't be because we're we're in a very very um masked state of being purposely purposely because if we were to know it all and we were to understand it all then we wouldn't have any growth we'd have no skin in the game so to speak we have to believe that everything is completely life or death we have to believe that everything is very very real and tangible uh, in order to, to gain benefit, because again, it's how are you going to respond to the stimulus? So when the universe, when the control system, when you know, the collective consciousness uh, throws us a curveball, it really is, and even though it might seem impossible, it is for the benefit of the higher self, because the higher self is really all about probing borders and expanding borders and testing ourselves to see how will we respond. So if the world is illusion and the self itself is an illusion, one of the central teachings of Buddhism is the concept of illusion, or Maya and Sanskrit, the concepts closely related to teaching of anatta or no self, which suggests that the self or the ego that we often identify with is an illusion. According to Buddhist teachings, the illusion of the self arises from a misunderstanding of the true nature of reality. We tend to see ourselves as separate, independent entities with fixed identities, but this is also an illusion. I could I could agree with that in, in that I've found myself in dreams, and it's not exactly me. Uh, in fact, I've shared with you guys that I, I do think there's a, a co-life going on of the higher self right now somewhere in Southeast Asia. And I would say I'm male and probably about 32 years old in that because I've actually seen that in that state of being that I was telling you about where you're at a certain brainwave activity and you're able to expand your consciousness outwards. And the reality is as we've talked about too, from the Taoist standpoint, and again, Taoism is another, if you've never gone down the Taoist path, there is so much truth in Taoism. And so many mysteries will be exposed in in meditating on the Tao. Everything that we see in this reality is a, a play and a drama, and we could see that clearly now with the system that it is a a drama, it is a play, it's orchestrated. They know what the next act is. They know, uh, you know, again, that these these wars and these major events have been set out a long time ago. But on some level, again, before we step in the body, we understand that. We understand the type of things that we are going to be facing because, you know, time itself is an illusion. So the self is an illusion as far as the fact that we are separate entities in the sense that we are all part of one living ocean of consciousness. It's just like, can you take a single cell from your body, detach it from your body? Can it go on? It's not going to, it's not going to last long, but as part of the whole, it has its own separate cellular identity, but yet it's part of something bigger. It's easy to see that we are all part of the planet, and yet we're individual consciousnesses. We also get that, again, even when you talk about the creator of this universe, that creator is in us to a degree, because we're coming into this matrix from that 
uh, matrix programmer per se, you know, again, to use the lingo that we're comfortable with in this world. Yet we are distinctive consciousnesses from the creator. And yet the source of all is in all of us as a different fractal unit, a different reflection. Think of a fractal, think of a re reflection of a diamond and light. Every single facet is going to re, uh, reflect and refract that light in a different way, depending on the location of the source of the light and you know the direction, size, and shape of each of the facets. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. And I think um, for me, I don't know. I think I'm. I'm. This is my thing. I have a problem with the word illusion. Because for me, that almost implies like it's not real or it's not important or it's not a part of anything. Like you can just bypass it because it's an illusion. And I, I did get to have an experience when I, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I was floating in front of Source and I was my own individual self separate from source, but I had come from source. So I think it's just probably, you know, stuff in the minutia, splitting hairs, whatever, because I do understand what they're saying. I just don't like the word illusion. I, it's my issue. And that's, that, that is my issue. You know, it's what something that I get to, to work through and I get to work through it out of love. I get to work through it for expansion's sake and this is why we're all here um, to embrace the individuality we have been given from source and I hear a lot of people talking about the oneness of everything and that is beautiful that is wonderful but I never want to lose sight of the the fact that I am that little speck from source comes from the all but I am me this is my journey I get to experience it being separate and and how far can I go with that like how far does that go for me and I I get to have all of this it's very very real for me yet at the same time I can move my perception in another direction and understand that I am more of the all that I am of myself if I want to move to that perception. I like I like the um, Ferris wheel analogy is really, really good. That's really good. It's probably the best I've ever heard. Because when you're down there in the bottom in the Kali Yuga, you really you can only see what's in front of you. And that's what they that's what they send us out in the media is um, just, you know, the only thing that's real is what's in front of you. And you can look up to other people to learn what else is around you. But what's most important is that you learn for yourself. So it's fine to look up to other people. You definitely want to be looking at people with good, good morals and values and, and, and everything else. And there's plenty of people that have a wider understanding that don't always use it for good. They use it for their own benefit, unfortunately. But they're there. Um, but the journey is yours. So you can look up to people who have a w wider understanding. But by the time you get to that point, you might have different, you know, you will have different perceptions and you'll perceive differently. Yet you are still from the, the one, the all, the source. All rivers lead to the same ocean. All rivers lead to the same ocean, but they're each individual. They all have their own journeys. They all have their own, um, their own, you know, landscape. They all get to see different things. They all get to carry different fish. They all have different experiences, but they all go to the same ocean. Absolutely. So I hope this answered some questions. And maybe this just made more questions. <laughs> Please do share your perspectives. Again, each one of us is a unique fractal of source. So we're never always going to see it exactly the same way. And, and that is exactly how source intends it. Much love as always. Much gratitude for you guys um, joining us and us being able to join with you in this ride and sharing our experiences again whatever they throw at us it's really all about how we react to them 
Source Plus and Namaste. Namaste.